What's up guys, it's the Sweet Sea. I hope you guys have been able to visit the park and get your first rides on some of your favorite coasters at Hershey Park. Today I want to talk about what I think is definitely one of my top three coasters at the park, and that's Great Bear. I've got something to say about how no one talks about how good of a coaster it is, but before we get into that, please join the sweetest community by liking this video and subscribing. All of you who comment and support our content means so much, so if you like what you see, please stick around for more. Anyways, let's talk about Great Bear. First, I want to go through the layout element by element and share my thoughts and feelings about the whole ride experience. As you begin your ascent into the sky, your feet dangle over the roaring waters of Coal Cracker. It might sound a little silly, but this moment is so cool to me. On a hot summer day, it's even better because you might feel some mist come up and hit your legs, which is definitely refreshing when it's 100 degrees. Now we're at the top of the lift, and man what a view. You can see the whole hollow, the entirety of Candemonium, the giant center, and in the other direction you see downtown Hershey. Bonus points if the ride is at sunset, because then you have a fantastic view of it and I promise it will look beautiful. Now we detach from the lift into a pre-drop. If you sit in the back, there's a good chance your legs are going to get thrown towards the bottom of the row in front of you. This part thrives in the back, which by the way is my personal favorite row to sit in for Great Bear. Just my two cents. Now here's where things get wonky. Instead of having a curve drop like other BM inverts, there's a helix after the pre-drop. Any other time, helixes are pretty boring, but man, this helix makes your stomach drop. It's forceful, it's loud, which I'll get into a little bit more later, and it picks up speed quick. I love how the ride does this towards the road as well. This element has really cool placement. After that, you meander through a short section of straight track until you go into what really feels like the first drop. You dive down over the bridge, crossing Spring Creek, with a drop height of about 120 feet. What an amazing drop too. Your legs have a great, no pun intended, near miss with a support as you go down as well, which really adds to the thrill of this drop. The bank into the drop is so cool too, it adds so much for me to the diving effect of this drop. Also, when you're in the back, of course, you will get whipped over as well. Then we hit our first inversion, which is a vertical loop. Again, if you're in the back, you get whipped over the top of it, making it such a forceful moment. I love this inversion a lot, but I think there's another one that's better, but we'll get into it soon. Exiting the vertical loop, you glide along Spring Creek into sort of a mini trench. This is where you really feel how fast you're going. It feels like you're going 70 miles per hour, but in reality, the ride's top speed is only 58 miles per hour. I can't believe I'm saying this, but what an effective piece of straight track. Following that is an Immelman. You'll soar upwards towards the sky and roll out at the end. And again, if you're in the back, you get slung out of that Immelman. Admittedly, it's not the most forceful inversion on the ride. In fact, I think it's the weakest, but I don't think it feels forceless, just weaker than all the others. And here comes the best part of the ride by far. It's this zero G roll. My oh my, what a forceful element. It doesn't matter what row you're sitting in for this, you get absolutely thrown in and out of it. It's done and over with before you know it, and that's how fast this element really is. I've ridden this coaster probably hundreds of times, and I still get surprised whenever I experience this element for just how much it whips you. Next, you'll dip down and glide right over the hollow and super duper looper. You take a fairly tight left turn over Spring Creek and proceed to fly right over the edge of it. This is another moment where you really feel the speed of the coaster. It's even better when it's time to just right and you'll fly right by looper as it passes its trim brake. Towards the end of the straight section, there are some more cool near miss moments with the supports as you curve a little to the left and into the fourth and final inversion which is a corkscrew. I'd say it's just as forceful as the zero G roll, but this inversion is not as comfortable in my opinion. Very occasionally, an emphasis on occasionally, I will bang my head the slightest bit here, which is why I don't think it's better than the zero G roll, but it is still a good inversion. And continuing the trend, if you sit in the back, you get spit out of this inversion. Crazy awesome moment. The final element consists of a graceful S bend around looper and above coal cracker, and then you hit the brake run next to the station. At this point, you're fixing your hair because the entire ride, it was flying all over the place. 
And if you're sitting in the front, you're wiping the tears out of your eyes, but overall, you arrive back in the station and you're thinking, wow, that was so good. I don't think I've ever gotten off of Great Bear thinking it was lacking anything. I've always found it to have such amazing pacing and speed, whether it's spring, summer, or fall. Let's talk about the theme because yes, this ride actually has some sneaky theming. For those of you who don't know, the Great Bear is a constellation that consists of seven major stars. You might be thinking, okay, so what? That's not theming. Well, it is, and here's how. Great Bear has seven major elements in its layout. It's got a helix, first drop, vertical loop, immelman, zero G roll, corkscrew, and an S bend. That makes seven elements. What a cool way to add a bit of character to an attraction. Of course, the roaring sound of the coaster also really helps, and I love it. This coaster is so loud that you can hear it from the Ferris wheel. It's that loud. The sound of Great Bear traversing its layout is almost a staple to Hershey Park 2. Just hearing the roar of Great Bear makes me feel like I'm there in the hollow. It's pretty amazing when it's something as simple as the sound can make you think that way. The last thing that I want to talk about with this amazing roller coaster are these supports. I don't know if many of you know this, but not a single support for this attraction even touches Spring Creek. When the park built this coaster, they were not allowed to touch the creek and therefore had to plan a way to build this coaster around it. I find it so impressive how they pulled it off. I mean, look at some of these crazy looking supports. It's insane. The way that some of these supports just jut out of the foot is so weird, but they pulled it off. And all of this leads me to my point in talking about this coaster. Nobody talks about it enough. It is such a great coaster. Most people talk about Skyrush, Candemonium, Stormrunner, and Fahrenheit, but they don't talk enough about this unique coaster right here. The way the coaster paces itself from start to finish and its wonderful use of the surrounding terrain is a chef's kiss in my eyes. Well, you've heard all of my thoughts about this star attraction, so now I want to hear yours. Let me know your thoughts on Great Bear in the comments below, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to become a part of the Sweet Seat community. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.